Even though we believe that in Turkey we have so specific problems regarding with human rights and politics, we are not alone. Definitely freedom of speech. I mean, yes, yeah, speaking is a very basic human right. Speaking about your ideas, putting on your ideas, just exposing them. It's too hard nowadays in Turkey to speak, especially if you're against the government's policies and actions. So there are strong restrictions because of this state of emergency in Turkey. So you can be just put in prison without no legal reason. You can feel or you can be detained for a couple of days for maybe three, four days and then you can be released and someone can tell you, might tell you that, oh, okay, there was nothing legally problematic, but we, we just took you in and took you out. Uh, people are afraid of writing in social media, which is so strong, powerful and widely used in Turkey. And you can hear stories every day, people are detained or arrested or sent to court just for tweeting about President Erdogan. So freedom of speech is a huge, huge, you know, concept that we really miss nowadays in Turkey. Exact examples I can give because you know many of them somehow have some negative points not because of the executors of those examples but because of again the state policies but I can say in general that whatever we have positive in Turkey nowadays are actually the outcomes of a very long long history of civil society or people who come together to do really good things concerning human rights. So I can talk a very, in a very general way that uh, we have positive things, we have a nice culture, I mean uh, we love our hospitality and being warm people being emotional people. So you can see that if you can just direct these emotions, these emotions and these good feelings of Turkish people into one direction, that you can somehow get really positive outcomes. And I have, I know many, many groups, many social organizations and many NGOs trying to do things in this way. You know, more emotional, maybe also rational ways for Turkish people uh, in order to have a more democratic and respectful and diverse society. Working with um, NGOs and social groups and communities and political parties, dealing with discrimination with regards to media mostly and also hate speech as we can see in the political discourse, everyday discourse, and also in media discourse. So I believe that our work on hate speech was, a, you know, has been a new dimension for people in Turkey who actually has a concern on human rights. So the books I, I've published, the books I've edited, the works that we have done together with other people, other people from NGOs and academy from universities, have opened new dimensions for those who, who actually didn't know about the concept, for example, hate speech before. So we somehow achieved, we, we, we could bring this concept of unknown concept of, of hate speech and media discrimination to the public sphere maybe limited but still we 
we could manage to have pages in mainstream media talking about hate speech and discrimination in media itself. So I think this could be the best contribution for now for me and for my colleagues to, to mention.